Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Data Center Polls focused on the chill off. Uh, today we're actually here to talk about the ABC Enro cold solution. And the reason I'm particularly excited about this is the first full eight rack solution that we'll be testing as part of the chill off. And then we'll also be testing at higher redundancy levels. So lots of cool new stuff with this solution. So with me today I've got Kevin Lemke from ABC. Welcome. Thank you. He's the overall product manager for ABC. He's going to talk to us about the products, some of the compelling features, and, uh, and that sort of thing. So welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah. So basically the setup that we've got going here, we've got a hot aisle pod set up. We've got two rows of racks. We've got the hot aisle container system on the solution. And we've got our in-row cooling units here. The cooling unit that you're actually seeing here is an in-row RC. It's a water-based solution, 300 millimeters wide. It's got eight fans in front of the unit. So all of these fans are hot swappable. You can replace them very easily. And then they also have the variable speed control. They'll actually ramp up and down as the capacity changes. Right? Another interesting feature with this is that it can be top or bottom height. Um, as you see here, we've got a top height. So this is on a hard floor environment. You can run the bottom piping on a raised floor environment as well. Right. So it does not require you to make any decisions before you actually have these at the facility to deploy. Right. Right. Now I know at Sun here, we've actually been using this product for a number of years, uh, back to about 0506, I think. And everything we've been doing since then has been on concrete slab. We haven't been doing anything with raised floor. And so we love the fact that you can pipe them overhead. Basically, just as you see it in this test environment, is how, for the most part, we've been, been deploying them in our actual data centers. So it's going to be really interesting to us to see how these perform in a controlled, efficiently blessed test environment. Um, now, the other part you mentioned was the variable speed fans. So what I want to point out is you can actually see the temperature sensors down there on the servers. Those aren't part of this test, per se, in the sense that they're part of the actual RC unit's system to regulate its output, right? Yes, definitely. We monitor the supplier uh, temperature from the unit, the rack inlet temperature, and the return air temperature to the unit. So we basically have the capacity feature on here. We'll actually show you how much capacity each unit is using, and it also allows you to do quick capacity planning decisions to make sure that you have enough cooling for your IG loads. Right, and completely automatic. That's one of the big compelling features that I know we saw back in 2005 with these, is that it's all automatic. Those, all those cooling units are operating themselves completely independent of any human interaction. And as the loads increase and decrease throughout the day, or uh, new racks are rolled in, it brings itself right up automatic. Definitely. So as you can see with this solution, we're doing redundancy with this solution, with the two end and end solutions. Right. So basically, whenever these units are operating at the two end mode, they'll actually be operating at a lower uh, set point to handle the rest of the load. Once you shut off half the units, then the other units will pick up and ramp up to the capacity that's required. Okay, now that, that brings up an interesting topic because number one, this is the first solution that we'll be testing in the various tier level configurations. So just from a pure data standpoint, I'm, I'm really interested in seeing that data come back. But what you just said there, that's really interesting because historically, whenever you talk about the higher density levels, excuse me, not density, higher redundancy levels, there's a price to be paid, or most will say that you're going to pay some level of efficiency price by going to those higher tier levels. It sounds like, theoretically, with the dynamic load control, that this system could operate in a full 2N mode, completely redundant, but there'll be load sharing across each other, and that if half that circuit goes down, then the system would just automatically ramp itself up on the circuit that's still alive. So you really wouldn't theoretically be paying an efficiency price. That is correct. Yes. Okay. As you're seeing with traditional rubber cooling solutions, they're operating at 100%, where these are operating at lower, right. and you shouldn't really see that impact that you see on traditional system. Right. So I know we're really interested in seeing that data come back. If that's true, or even if the, if the difference is very small or negligible, that's going to be really interesting data as we plan for centers that are considered to be mission critical, but previously it was cost prohibitive to run them as a true mission critical, two, full two and that kind of thing. So that's going to be really interesting. Uh, now you mentioned the hot out containment. This is what you guys are doing here in terms of full actual steel door with plexiglass panels on the top, right? Yeah, we're doing the plexiglass panels on the top, the steel door at the end of the aisle, completely separating the hot and cold air stream from the data center. So you can basically take this solution and deploy it directly in a data center so it's room neutral. So you're not worried about affecting the other equipment on your uh, floor. So if you look at the, these units, 
you didn't have a containment on here, you could see maybe like 85 degree return air temperature to your units. This unit would be seen right around 18 kilowatts worth of capacity. Once you add the containment, separate the hot and cold air streams, you're driving that return air temperature up, say 105 degrees, you're actually driving the capacity up to 30 kilowatts on these units now. Gotcha. So now that's that's actually really to point. What have you guys seen in the industry in terms of efficiency of the intro cooling units and then when you add the uh, containment? Um, basically, if you take a look at it and assume everything's operating at 100% fan speed, uh, the perimeter cooling solutions versus this solution, this solution without the hot out container system would be around 20% more efficient than what you would see with the traditional perimeter crack. But if you start adding the hot out container system to it, you're driving up those uh, return air temperatures, now you're increasing your efficiency to say 30 or 40% more efficient. That's all at 100% fan speed. So whenever the fan speed starts to reduce, the energy efficiencies are going to go up even more. Right, right, yeah. Okay, so that's going to be really interesting to see as well on this step. And one of the things I want to ask you, last thing I want to ask you about, was the hot-out containment, which obviously APC has been doing. Um, do you even offer a cold-out containment? Does it matter? Because uh, I've, I've heard of both schools of thought. Currently, we do not offer a cold-out containment solution. Um, we looked at both options whenever we did go to the hot-out containment solution. The hot out containment solution ensures more higher temperatures to your cooling units, so that drives up the cooling efficiency of the cooling units. Whenever you're looking at it also, hot aisle versus cold aisle, if you look at the space here, you've got a 36 inch wide hot aisle that's uh, high to the rack, that's got all your hot air contained. So if some of your cooling equipment fails, you've got the whole plenty of space as your cool supply air temperature to your inlet of your IGA equipment. Right, so a little longer, I'm theoretically a little longer ride here today. Yes, okay. Okay. Great. Well, thanks for giving us the overview. Very informative. And like I said, from the from the end user standpoint, I know I'm really interested in seeing how this performs and that we've been using it for a while. So, uh, good stuff. All right, folks, so stay tuned for future episodes coming up soon as we close out the chilled water-based test and move to refrigerant after this. Thanks.